Hey, how's it going? You ever have that feeling where like uh, you get into a band or something like that and then about the time that uh, you know all the lyrics and that you love the entire album and uh, you you feel such a kinship with it that you have to take it a step further now. Now you want to go see them. But then you look up the band and you find out they've been broken up for years. That is kind of the experience with... Um, trying to follow up on people that created these radio plays. You're constantly chasing ghosts, and unfortunately, just due to the time so many people have passed on, um, we've lost a lot of great people, but uh, in these cases, uh, typically people that have lived very long, fulfilling lives. Um, and uh, one of those who is a huge hero of mine and has always been is Hyman Brown. Uh, I talk about him a lot. Um, he uh, was... The man behind Suspense, Inner Sanctum, CBS Radio Mystery Theater. He did over 300,000 shows. The guy was an absolute force, and he was an amazing human being, um, at least from everything I've seen. And um, he had started uh, the uh, Radio Drama Network. Uh, he had founded that before he had passed away uh, because he was so passionate about uh, radio drama and that's kind of one of the things that's so endearing about him is that he was an absolute workaholic but he truly loved what he did and he absolutely felt that he was making the world a better place and I tend to agree with him but um, I had reached out to the radio drama network a while ago and I had just you know said hey this is what I'm doing um, I don't see a ton of people talking about old radio plays so I'm trying to go in and provide context and um, if you see, you know, if you, I asked them if they wouldn't mind looking at it, you know, if they see any errors or anything like that, they'd let me know because <laughs> there's not a lot of um, places to really check or fact check yourself. <laughs> so um, I ended up getting a response back from Melina Brown, who is Hyman Brown's uh, granddaughter. And um, she was with him up until the end. She was a huge part of his life uh, as caregiver and also right hand person uh, she didn't just assist him with living she assisted him with work and that's why she was eventually chosen by him to take over uh, the radio drama network and uh, she has just as much passion for it as he does and uh, couldn't have picked a better person to do it and I just um, I'd summarize the letter that she'd sent back because it has a lot of amazing information on Hyman and his life, um, where his current works are stored and um, what's going on with that. So I'm just going to read you this letter. This will probably be a really long video, but I've wanted to put this up for a while and I wasn't quite sure because it's not our typical format. But here we go. Let me see if I can just put this there. Hopefully that doesn't fall. Here we are. Hi, Nick. I am Hyman Brown's granddaughter, and I'm the president of his foundation supporting the spoken word called Radio Drama Network. My grandfather's archives are housed at CUNY TV in New York City, but there is currently no access unless you get special permission from me. That currently is only for educational purposes, and recently someone who is writing a new RMT guide was allowed in. We have all the RMT shows and scripts digitized, along with Adventure Theater and other shows from earlier in High's career. We were able to transfer some glass discs to digital and uncovered some very rare shows. We are currently in pre-production on a limited-run podcast about High's life and the beginning of radio drama. The strike delayed production until next year, but that is coming right up. That podcast will be available as a joint production of Radio Drama Network and CUNY TV, and we will publicize it. I'm happy to help in any way, but I can't give much access to materials right now due to an ongoing litigation with Hyman's old lawyer. I'm hoping it will be over soon because we would like to make use of the old shows and create more new shows. Hyman loved audio drama and was planning shows until the day he died. He constantly wrote out story ideas in longhand and relied on some very good writers and, st and a stable of excellent actors. Most of his writers and actors are gone now. He would be very to happy ah, he would be very happy to hear of what you're doing, but he never liked to dwell on the old shows. He preferred to think of new projects. I spent a ton of time with him and was with him until he died in 2010, and I soaked up all the stories and shows that I grew up around. 
I will have a look at your YouTube channel when I've got a minute. We should keep in touch. Please follow our page here and our YouTube channel, which is new. Uh, they also have a Twitter and Instagram. Uh, They're building a web presence, so most of this is new. Um, so yes, please follow uh, Radio Drama Network on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and uh, I, I was telling her at this point, I was like, you know, honestly, like, uh, this is uh, this is the closest I'm ever going to get to meeting one of my heroes. And uh, also just knowing somebody who knew him and uh, even uh, meeting other people that are just that uh, she was that involved and in with his work. And uh, so she responds, <laughs> as far as being starstruck, I have to say that High was just a regular guy who was sort of a workaholic. I'm just a normal person who spends most of my time working and caring for my 90 year old mom. I was lucky to move to his country house with my one-year-old as a single mom around 28 years ago. Hyman drove up here every weekend, as he always had, and really enjoyed his great-grandchildren. My son is now back on the property, living in a barn where all of his music stuff is. He is a drummer and percussionist, so he needs a separate place, or I would have gone crazy a long time ago. Hi and I used to sit on the lawn watching my son play and laughing. Hi had a very dry humor, and he was so smart. He started, he started out with me like an older style man, just helping what he thought was a helpless family member. But as time went on, he realized that I was every bit as smart as he was, and I ended up doing more and more for him. He taught me quite a bit about grant giving and what he wanted. We had so many adventures, so I'm working hard on his legacy. But we were and are just some normal folks. When we bought this place in the late 30s, a lot of his actors and writers had country places up here. He always loved it and worked on the land. I cherish those memories of his jokes and how he laughed, and of him coming out of the woods dragging some vine or branch that he found. At one point, a couple Mormons came up the back driveway, walking his rural neighborhood, and he was like, let me handle this, and went, to, and went on to school them about everything in the universe. Ha ha. They were backing away by the end of it. I was a genius, but he was not the easiest guy. He was devoted to his family, but had, overcome, or, but had become estranged from my father and aunt due to family things. I was overwhelmed raising my kid alone, but he helped me so much just in letting us live here, and he was able to become more and more supportive, finally realizing that I was who should be his successor on the foundation. I took care of him until he died. The legal matter involves High's lawyer misdirecting funds in a fraudulent way, and I have been fighting that since High died. There is some press on the case if you look for it. The case continues and is close to finished, but there have been many delays which are frustrating and stop me from being able to do what we should be doing. Still, we support theater, film, and poetry worlds, along with some other spoken word educational projects. Oh yeah, one more thing. The producer who is making the podcast at CUNY TV asked me yesterday if I would come with the team to Hyman's old studio, which he'd sold years ago, and last I saw was being used by Martha Stewart, who totally redid the whole thing to walk around and try and figure out where the office was and other memories that I have from the olden days when he kept his office there and they were shooting Patty Duke and also Captain Kangaroo, then later the Guiding Light. I used to use the rolling chairs and roll down those hallways really fast. Good memories there. I think that the idea is to get the sound of what the studios were like back in the Mad Men era. I remember those sounds and smells well. I'm already in this podcast, but I guess I'm being drawn in again. Happy to do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, there, there is more, but, um, I feel like we're getting a little long in the tooth now, but, um, it was, uh, it's very incredible to hear back from Melina and, uh, also just to share so much about her life with Hyman. Um, and, uh, I hope that you guys go and check out the, uh, network for radio drama and, uh, see what they're doing there. And uh, thank you so much for checking it out. We will be back with another actual show review soon. Thank you, guys.